bring in uh, Mitch Williams, uh, analyst for the Major League Baseball Network. Um, uh, Mitch, let me start with the apology with Ryan Braun. What did you expect, and uh, do you even care about these apologies anymore? Uh, to be honest, Dan, the the apologies are so hollow now that I'm kind of numb to it all. Uh, they all after Braun's press conference, after the arbiter and everything ruled he was innocent of any wrongdoing. To come out and be so adamant and say I stake my reputation or they question my integrity, my reputation, everything about me, and then to have to turn around and eat every one of those words and people lost their jobs over it all. It's To me, all the apologies are just really hollow. Well, it seems like if it took you a month to put it together for an apology, how, can, how sincere can an apology be after a month? Exactly. It didn't take him a month to, to put together the press conference after he was proven innocent. Here's the other thing that, and I'm not sure where we go with any of this stuff, but if you if you were trying to get out of either of these contracts, if I said you could have A-Rod's contract, or if you're the Angels, Albert Pujols' contract, or the Brewers with Ryan Braun, you were trying to get out from underneath those three contracts, which one would you choose? Pujols. Oh, man. <laughs> it's not going to end well, Mitch. No, it's not. I mean, I look at it, and I said from the minute it was signed, you you don't sign a 31-year-old man to a 10-year contract. There is no way you can expect the kind of production on the last five years of that contract that are going to warrant that kind of money. But it's, don't you think they did this as a five-year plan, hoping to win a World Series, knowing you had to give him 10 to get him away from somebody else? Uh, It, it could have been that, yeah. But when you look at it, they're not going to win unless they get somebody on the mound. You can have all the offense you want. If you don't even got pitching, and the Texas Rangers proved that for years. We, I was part yeah. of it. We built an offense to score 12 runs a game and a pitching staff to give up 13. So you got to get pitching. It all starts with pitching. That You can go out and sign all the bats you want, but you see how valuable pitching is. Speaking of which, Clayton Kershaw. I had Joe Madden on earlier in the week, and he talked about his deliveries a little funky. But, I mean, these numbers he's putting up, you, you have an ERA under two this late into the season. You got my attention. And you're doing it for a pennant-winning team. Um, you know, Kershaw, he doesn't get the headlines, as some of these other guys do. But has anybody been better than Kershaw? Uh, to this point, the only guy I would argue has been as good is Harvey. And... Harvey's not going to beat him mm, Cy Young because they're going to shut Harvey Yeah, down. I can't. I can't. Nah, I think Kershaw's been dumb. I think Harvey's had moments, but I don't think he's been consistent. He hadn't been consistent. He's got three losses, and two of them he didn't give up an earned run. Okay, who would you want on the mound with their best stuff? Harvey. Okay. All right, I'll disagree. I'll take I like. I like Kershaw's makeup. I, don't get me wrong. I love Clayton. I love everything about Clayton. The person he is, the pitcher he is, there's no question. He's tremendous. I'm not wild about his mechanics because I think the older he gets, he's going to have to change them. He's so strong right now, and he's got youth on his side that he can get away with the slide step and all that and, and still overpower the baseball and get his arm to release point. As he gets older, that's not going to be the case. Here's another thing I'm sure you'll disagree with me and call me crazy. The best Cuban-born player in the National League right now is not – Yasiel Puig. It's not. It's Fernandez. Hey, hey, hey. he's the uh, Marlins pitcher. Explain why you're, wow, we agree on something. Well, I sit back from a pitcher's standpoint, and I look at Yasiel Puig. He has got a ton of raw talent. He, anybody that thinks he's going to hit 350 doesn't know that pitchers figure out how to pitch hitters. That's why there's very few guys that hit above 320. And this guy's not going to rewrite the record book as far as batting average. He stands way off the plate, which tells me as a pitcher he can't hit the ball in. And he swings at anything moving forward that breaks off the plate. Stop throwing him strikes. When I look at Fernandez, this kid is so far above the curve. And he just turned 21, I think. Yes, he did. He just turned 21 years old, and he knows how to pitch. He hasn't even developed his third and fourth pitches yet. He's working on a changeup, but his slider is the most unhittable slider in baseball. Wow. That's high praise from you.
and he's he's packing around as you saw. I I think it he proved it the other night when the first time he faced Puig, he threw him ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. He's Mitch Williams from the Major League Baseball Network joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I uh, I understand the unwritten rules of baseball, but you as a former pitcher with Ryan Dempster and Alex Rodriguez. My biggest problem with this, Mitch, was the umpiring could have prevented the nonsense from going even further. And I got a manager who gets fined twice as much as the guy who started all of this in Ryan Dempster. I, I Explain that to me in the unwritten rules of baseball here. Well, the unwritten rules of baseball, number one, Dempster had no reason to throw at him, in my opinion. What A-Rod's done has messed up his career. He, he's hurt the Yankees organization. He hasn't done anything to the Boston Red Sox. He hasn't done anything to Ryan Dempster that I know of. So throwing at him, number one, if you're going to throw at him, hit him the first time. I know. I mean, it's like the Strasburg deal uh, a week and a half ago. You miss someone by eight feet, you, really, you ain't sending a message. The only message you're sending is you're scared to hit somebody. So I had a problem with that. I had a really big problem with Joe Girardi getting fined because he should not have been. He was right. He threw at him three or two or three different times. And the Yankees get warned. Now their pitcher, if they throw a ball inside and accidentally hit somebody, is going to get ejected. Yeah. That's just wrong. Girardi was right. Well, if I throw behind you on the first pitch, that's when I warn. I, I just Absolutely. It's so early in the game. And this is something Buck Showalter – uh, brought up a couple of days ago to me, and I don't know if you guys at Major League Baseball Network can figure this out, is were there pitchers who were warming up in the bullpen, to, you know, to the extent that they knew Dempster was going, was it premeditated that far in advance that you say, look, I'm going to pop him and I might get thrown out of here? Were there guys who were going to be warming up because they knew they were going to come in? Oh, I don't, I, I didn't see the tape on it, whether or not there was anybody warming up. That would have been a, a uh, pretty big tell, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Unless you go, boy, Dempster's not pitching. Well, better get up. Wait, he's only pitched three guys here. Now nah, yeah. get get somebody up there. No, uh, that that John Farrell wouldn't be that blatant about it. There's just no way. All right, here's the other thing. Ichiro credited with his 4,000th professional hit. Uh, he's you know he's got what 27, 2800 here in the states. Um. I, he's not my favorite leadoff guy of all time by any stretch of the imagination. He doesn't have a great signature moment. He's not a leader. He's not a great leadoff guy, but he does still do something exceptionally well and was a great fielder. He didn't play for winning teams. So if I just take it upon that, I'm not comparing him to Ricky Henderson or Pete Rose or anybody, but Hall of Famer first ballot, given all of that attached to each of them. No, he won't be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, of do I think he's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, I do. And the reason I think the 4,000 is so significant is because there has been no one in the history of our game in Major League Baseball that has gotten more hits over a 13-year period than Ichiro. And the other part of it that's impressive, he didn't start in the States until he was 27. It's unbelievable what this guy's accomplished. But he wasn't a great leadoff guy. Right with the, you know he doesn't he didn't walk uh, on base percentage those kind of things and I know he stole what five hundred bases so he's gotten he's a, he compiled great numbers but does that put him in the category of a great leadoff hitter of all time? Uh, it puts him in the category of a great hitter, a, a great offensive player. He's a great offensive player. Whether or not you can't compare anyone to Ricky Henderson offensively, no. But Ricky was not a good outfielder. <laughs> I mean, Ricky couldn't throw the ball from left field to shortstop. He just didn't have a very good arm. Yeah, but offensively, there is no comparison. Well, Ichiro really. has a great arm. Now, exactly. I know he's playing right field, so people argue. Well, you know, that's where the strongest arm goes. I I agree with that. Yeah, you know, Clemente and Ellis Valentine. I mean, they, there's a long list of great. Mark Whitten. Yeah, hard hitting Mark Whitten. Yeah. Dave Winfield. You see guys like that. They put them out there. Dave Parker. For that re reason. Yeah. But Ichiro, not a first ballot Hall of Famer, but a Hall of Famer. I believe so, yes. Yeah. All right. But who knows? I don't vote on anything. There, there's probably a reason for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to let a hillbilly vote on who goes in the Hall of Fame. I don't think they're going to change that rule. 
No, I don't think so anytime soon. Uh, good to visit with you. Stay out of trouble, all right? You got it, man. All right, buddy. Mitch Williams, Major League Baseball Network analyst. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.